Well, everyone, Lunar Lake, Intel's Hail Mary play for the laptop market, it's finally here. And I mean officially here so we can show you benchmarks and most importantly, battery life for it. But before we get into all those benchmarks and everything else, there's a couple things that you absolutely need to know about Lunar Lake and what it means to the thin and light laptop market. First of all, these chips are designed as a complete package with the CPU, memory, GPU, and controllers for wireless and IO ports all on a single die. Because of this, you'll either get 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory that is not upgraded. They all feature eight cores and eight processing threads. So SMT has been removed to improve overall efficiency. Intel is also using the second generation of their XE graphics cores, which gives a huge speed up over the ones found in Meteor Lake. While they all have the same core count and memory layouts, there's some pretty major differences in clock speeds, GPU core count, NPU abilities, and cache when comparing the Ultra 9 and 7 to the Ultra 5 models. Any model number with an eight at the end has 32 gigabytes, while six means 16 gigs. Wi-Fi 7 and Thunderbolt come standard in all of these laptops. Meanwhile, all the CPUs run at just 8 watts to 37 watts, so Lunar Lake is laser focused at thin and light devices, not gaming laptops. It will also typically run in lower power modes than Meteor Lake and AMD's Ryzen AI 300 series. The focus here is not on winning any performance awards. It's getting better responsiveness, high efficiency, and a major, major focus on battery life above all other things. So that pretty much covers Lunar Lake from a very, very high level. Now to test this new architecture, we've got two different devices. That would be the Yoga Slim 7i Aura Edition, and also the ZenBook S14. Now, while these two laptops come from two very, very different manufacturers, there's a couple of key design philosophies that will run through almost every single Lunar Lake laptop that you see. They're thin, light, run cool, they're quiet, and have a port selection highlighted by dual Thunderbolt 4s running at 40 gigabits per second. Not only that, but both are very similarly priced, and the value story is going to be a critical one for all of these laptops. Even with 32 gigs of memory installed, one terabyte SSDs, and 120 20 hertz OLED screens both run for under $1,500. And if you equip the Slim 7i with the Core Ultra 7 256V and a 512 gig SSD, it'll hit under $1,300. Meanwhile, in their highest performance modes, they're running the 258V at 28 watt and 30 watt respectively, which is actually at the upper end of Intel's TDP spectrum for these chips. Meanwhile, in their out of box balance modes, power ranged from just 19 watts to 24 watts. And we said this once, and I will say it again. When comparing laptop CPU architectures to one another, doing it with power level parity is excessively important because without that, there's no way to look at one CPU and say, hey, this one is absolutely better than the other one. Because look, one of them could be running at excessively high wattages while the other one wouldn't be. And that would give a completely skewed view of the whole situation. We ultimately settled on laptops with the Ultra 7 155H and Ryzen AI 9 365, which could be set to around 30 watts, or in the 365's case too, about 33 watts. The other two are still direct competitors, but for completely different reasons. The eight core M3 is hyper efficient, but needs to be here since the MacBook Air is the most likely Apple laptop that'll be cross shopped against a lot of these Lunar Lake devices. Meanwhile, the X1E 781 100 is another matter altogether. Since Qualcomm still hasn't allowed for third-party monitoring of their CPU power, we used a formula to approximate its consumption and the Slim 7X's balance mode came closest to what we needed. Unfortunately, even in a best case scenario, it seemed to chug back more than 30% more power than the Lunar Lake devices. So that's the whole laptop lineup that you're going to see in this video. But before we go on, Let's hear from our sponsor. I don't know how Fantex does it, but the XT lineup offers incredible value for your money with these mid towers. The interior is ready for today's challenging needs with a 360 up top, up to 10 120 mil fans, any GPU would fit, it's BTF ready, and your choice of a cool presentation with the XT View model or high performance with the XT Pro and Pro Ultra. All of the illumination is tasteful and appreciated at this price point, and everything is double boxed with protective corners so the XTs travel safe. Check them out below and spend responsibly. So Intel's intent for Lunar Lake, it's pretty darn clear, right? This is a hyper efficient 
architecture. But in laptops like these, and a lot of other ones that you're going to see, it is also being scaled upwards to meet higher power levels and higher performance targets too. Unfortunately, we couldn't line up battery capacity between the devices as well as we might have liked. While the Snapdragon and two Lunar Lake laptops all hover around the 70 watt hour mark, the MacBook M3 has a tiny 53 watt hour unit, while the Meteor Lake and Ryzen 300 laptops both have significantly bigger battery capacities. And even with that significant disadvantage, the two Ultra 7 258V laptops get absolutely titanic battery life in our local video playback test. I mean, the ZenBook S16 was already one of the best x86 Windows laptops, but the Slim 7i beat it by a solid hour, while the ZenBook S14 hit almost 16 hours here. The only architecture that seems better in this case is Snapdragon, though what Apple does with that minuscule battery is just freaking crazy. And I wanna pause here for a second because I know that a lot of people have been seeing some absolutely bananas battery life numbers on local video playback for Lunar Lake. We've seen some claims of 24 hours. And no matter what we did with these devices using our own methodology, we couldn't get anywhere close to that. And that included enabling battery saver, which we typically don't do, and putting screen brightness to absolutely the bare minimum. So I'm not sure if there's some convoluted testing out there or we're just seeing some very hand-picked results, but we cannot give you those type of results here. Anyways, moving on, there's a huge win here for Apple during web browsing, but the two Lunar Lake devices still put down some really impressive numbers. I think the biggest highlight has to be the ZenBook S14. It uses a very similar chassis as the ZenBook 14 OLED with its 155H, but it gets a whole two hours more runtime despite having a smaller capacity battery. We also have to remember the Yoga Slim 7i Aura Edition is using a 15 inch screen while the other laptops here are 14 inch or smaller. So that might give it a little bit of a disadvantage. Meanwhile, streaming video through YouTube sees all the laptops get pretty similar results with the Ryzen AI 9 365 being the odd man out here by failing to break the 13 hour mark. I think it's safe to say though, even with all of that Windows Copilot plus bloat, Lunar Lake is a battery life beast. And that carries into heavy load scenarios too, but we have to remember, this situation is largely dependent on the amount of input power each system is willing to give their processors while under load. So other than the MacBook, every laptop here gets about the same results since they're all running at similar similar power levels. So when it comes to battery life, I would say mostly it's mission accomplished for Intel. They're really seeing some impressive gains, but I do have one disappointment that I wanted to broach already. And that's simply the fact that Lunar Lake has been designed to simplify laptop design. The PCBs on these laptops are significantly smaller than we typically see on other types of laptops. I was really hoping to see manufacturers start taking advantage of that space savings and popping in a bigger battery. Can you imagine what either of these laptops would do if we were looking at maybe like a 75 or 80 watt hour unit in them? That's what I really wanna see and hopefully that's gonna come in second generation devices. But anyways, let's head straight down the benchmarks rabbit hole, starting with some real world usage scenarios. To set the stage, Cinebench's single thread benchmark can give a good synthetic idea about how things will shake out since thin and light devices are usually used for lightly threaded tasks. And here, Lunar Lake shows huge performance improvements over Meteor Lake, dominates Snapdragon, and can even overtake Zen 5. The only thing that beats it is that Apple M3. But its positioning seems to be very situationally dependent because in Cinebench 2023, things sort of flip around on their heads. While the 285V does show a healthy improvement over the 155H and just embarrasses the X1E78, the Ryzen AI 9 365 is now slightly ahead. Moving on to a more real world scenario with Office Apps shows the two Ultra 7 258V systems well ahead of every other Windows-based laptop, even though a number of these tests do rely a little bit more on the storage system for file saves. They also compete really well against the MacBook M3, which had amazing results in some programs while it struggled in others. In more creative focused apps, we start running into a sort of yin and yang situation for Lunar Lake. While its numbers are really, really good for only having eight processor threads, the problem is that it's running up against processors that have 
20 threads. And that raw horsepower does start to matter in some situations. Meanwhile, it's also competing against the M3, which might also have just eight cores of its own, but programs running on it are hyper optimized. But when you start adding in the new XE2 based ARC 140V into that equation, Lunar Lake moves into a whole other level. While it still can't quite beat the M3 here, it's miles ahead of anything else in the Windows thin and light laptop segment. Probably the most impressive thing here is that it trounces the 155H and Ryzen 365 while running at the same wattage despite having just eight threads. I also have to mention Qualcomm here because yes, Premiere is technically supported through emulation, but all of our tests are done on the latest 2024 version. And for whatever ass backwards reason, Adobe decided emulation will only work on the older 2023 edition. Now I know using these super compact laptops for heavily multi-threaded workloads is a bit unrealistic and Lunar Lake faces a serious thread count deficiency, but in Cinebench 2024, it does a lot better than I expected. I mean, it's still miles behind AMD's latest 20 thread CPU, but it's just narrowly beaten by the Ultra 7 155H. A lot of that is due to the newer instruction sets being used in the 2024 version, since moving onto Cinebench 2023 shows a very different story. Now it's just struggling against even the 155H, though it does beat the M3 and Snapdragon X Elite processor. Blender highlights this pretty well too. I mean, sure, the Ryzen 9 365 is consuming about 10% more power than the Yoga here, but if you really want your thin and light laptop to moonlight as a CPU focused rendering machine, you should buy a Zen 5 based system. It's as simple as that. The same goes for if you want to use a CPU focused video conversion tool. I mean, of course, 20 processing threads will win over eight. And yet when you look at the 155 H's numbers, the Lunar Lake CPUs get surprisingly close. However, many of those transcoding tools also support encoding and decoding acceleration through each chip's dedicated media engine. Though personally, I was hoping for a bigger speed up here since Intel's QuickSync engine got some updates with Lunar Lake. But on the other end, Intel is only using a single MFX engine here, so performance gets reduced versus the previous generations. Another thing I wanted to discuss is the performance of Lunar Lake when you're unplugged from the mains. And I know it's completely unrealistic to think any of these devices are going to be used in very, very demanding scenarios when you're completely away from a plug. But the last thing you want in a pinch is for performance to completely fall off a cliff when you need it the most. And well, let's just say the performance drop off for Lunar Lake is a lot less than the 1558 and Ryzen AI 9 365, but this is not a MacBook moment for Intel, since that M3 retains a whole lot more of its juice. In some cases, it actually ties its scores when it's plugged in. And the reason for a lot of that is we have to remember it's sipping back just 11 watts. So there's a lot less of a concern that it'll burn through its entire battery in a few minutes. And arguably one of the biggest claims that Intel has made throughout the entire process of their disclosures about Lunar Lake is the potential performance of that XE2 graphics engine within the chips. This is their next generation of GPU architecture that will probably make it into the desktop side pretty soon. But we also have to temper expectations here. These are thin and light devices. They're not meant to deliver insane frame rates. They're just enough to get you by, but maybe Lunar Lake will push things beyond there. The bigger question though is, how do these compete with AMD's latest and greatest? Starting with synthetics, and with these at least, it looks like Lunar Lake has a relatively big lead over pretty much everything else, even the 880M in AMD's new AI365 processor. And while both Ultra 7 285V laptops are running at different overall power levels, there's some situations that point towards the Asus ZenBook S14 feeding its integrated graphics engine with a little bit more power. Or this could be sample to sample variance between chips, since the results between them are well within the margin of error. And as usual, placement in 3D Mark doesn't necessarily translate into actual in-game frame rates. Things are generally a lot closer, but there's still a few common threads throughout. First of all, even in its slightly lower clocked form in the 258V, the ARC 140V beats the 880M in almost every single title. It isn't a clear sweep though, but it's pretty close. And you have to remember the Ryzen chip is pulling about 10% more power too. Meanwhile, Lunar Lake also represents a good frame rate boost over the 155H, with the biggest differences being in newer games that are GPU rather than CPU limited. It usually hovers around the 15 to 25% mark, but those 1% lows get a much larger shot of adrenaline overall. Of course, the Snapdragon processors should really be avoided if you're thinking of gaming on your laptop. Even now, months after launch, compatibility still struggles. So where does this all leave us 
with Lunar Lake. And there's a couple points that I wanted to bring up. The first of which is that this is a massive gamble for Intel. They're going against their own narrative, which up until this point has said more processing threads equals better. Well, they are placing a bet, or at least they're hoping that the people using thin and light laptops are willing to give up that massive amount of performance in heavy multi-threaded workloads to gain in a couple of areas. That would be battery life, overall responsiveness in apps that they use most, a little bit more gaming performance, surface temperatures, and a bunch of other quality of life features. Is that bet going to pay off? Personally, I think it will. One of the reasons is they're able to accomplish so much with so little. Think of it this way. The 155H has 250% more processing threads than the 258V, but that only translated into about 30% better multi-threaded performance in our tests. If that doesn't point towards there being some serious advantages over the previous generation architecture, I don't know what does. Pricing for these laptops, well, it looks like it's going to cause a really, really big problem for first generation Copilot Plus devices with Qualcomm's Snapdragon X Elite. They cost about the same, but offer less compatibility, about the same battery life, much less consistent performance, and a generally terrible gaming experience. And what we saw here might be just the tip of the iceberg, because you can't forget what Intel is saying about Lunar Lake is that it's scaling between 8 watts and about 17 watts is the best we're going to see. Meanwhile, above that, like the 30 or so watts that we're seeing on both of these laptops, that's where performance per watt sort of starts struggling a bit. So in its natural habitat, around 17 watts, I think these things are going to be absolutely dominant. But that is another video for another day. Until that point, I'm Mike with Haru Canucks, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.